Hi, I'm Daryl Braithwaite, and you're watching Noise 11. And we welcome you to Noise11.com, Daryl Braithwaite. Good Thank to have you, Daryl. Good to be here. And <laughs> new technology, <laughs> Daryl Braithwaite on DVD. It's a DVD, that's yeah, it, yeah. 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 <laughs> so the, uh, the first live DVD that you've ever done. I, I believe so. It's from uh, I was trying to look through all the the back catalogue of you know from Sony when um, Edge came out and all that, and it, I, I saw a bit of a live concert from somewhere that maybe Sony had filmed, but mm. it didn't come out to my knowledge as a, um, a compilation or anything. So I've been dying to do one, and we finally the band and I finally got the chance um, oh, earlier this year, uh, April, and mm. with, we were playing with Jimmy Barnes mm -hmm. in Perth. So, uh, and I didn't realise that <clears throat> Jimmy Barnes's audience are a little bit anti anyone else who's on. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, um, I had to really not tell them fibs, but just say that I knew Jimmy and that we have been going a little bit longer than Jimmy. So, so it, it sort of needed a little bit of, um, I guess trying to ease my way into them mm. uh, as such, but it ended up really, really good. But then uh, the vision was fantastic from the, over there at that gig. The sound, um, the guy lost it on the hard drive, completely lost it. And, and a week later, he rang me up and said, Darrell, it's all gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? <laughs> he said, I've just lost it. And oh, I said, okay. So then I thought, well, we've got another gig coming up here in Victoria. I'll film that. So I filmed that, recorded that, and that it wasn't the same. It was colder, as you can imagine. It was Mansfield, and uh, it was colder. The stage wasn't as big, but anyway, I was um, in the situation. I thought, oh, that'll be all right. That'll, yeah, mm. it w wouldn't be as good as the the Perth one, but then the Perth one we didn't have the the sound for. But then uh, about six weeks after that, the, the guy from Perth rang and said. I gave it to a friend and he's retrieved all the audio. Oh, wow. So it was... Um, so it all came back. Yeah. So then I've had, I've got Mansfield just <laughs> as a waste of money or whatever you call it. But yeah. it's, yes, but it's, it, it's really, really good. It's sort of, and David Briggs from Little River Band did the mixing and, uh, and all that. And, and it's completely live. So there's, you know, notes in there that are a bit bung and stuff like that. But... Yeah. The feels there. Good old Briggsy. Hoochie coochie for your Uchi mama. <sighs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> and he's got some great stories to tell. He's, mm. I know, I've digressed a little bit. <laughs> he really has. Yeah, so putting the set list together, you know, is it is it something that you just sort of have the stock standard now? How do you go about deciding what songs you're going to do per gig? Yeah, it's, uh, we've got a, a set list that we've been playing probably about a year or two years and over the last uh, three months, we've added two new songs, two or three. Um, and we've actually added a Sherbet song as well, which was uh, Blues Walking. Mm -hmm. uh, and the new songs, and the new songs now, it's uh, as, I mean, it is so hard to promote them because you just, you know, but we're, for some reason, uh, the people have accepted, say, the uh, Beautiful Feeling and there's another one, high on a mountain which um I, I introduced the other night at the the heathcote hotel in sydney and a big crowd and i just said we're going to do a new song i said you probably don't want to hear it anyway so i'm not even going to tell you what it's called <laughs> <laughs> and we did it and they really liked it but it was um so there's so playing new stuff is is quite rewarding in some ways you know it's um we're gradually getting them in and and dropping some of the Maybe stuff, I don't know, whether it's a cover or some of the stuff off Edge and or Rise, but uh, no, it's, it's working out all right at mm. the moment. We do a few covers. In fact, yeah. on, on here, uh, Peter Gabriel. Yep. I don't remember. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we well, used to I know do... you're a big fan of Peter Gabriel, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. And we used to do Salisbury Hill mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, and, and for the last year, maybe a couple of years, we've been doing the kinks all day and all of the night. Mm -hmm. And it just... Oh, I mean, if I had a written a song like that, not not for the monetary rewards, but just the feel of having written a song that's it's so um, 
what do you call it? Infectious. Mm-hmm. Once you start, da 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 and the whole crap, and whether it's young people or old, it's just just takes off. Mm. It's fantastic. Well, Wishing Well's like that too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which well, was one song that you did do back in the old Sherbet days. That's right, yeah. We actually recorded that. I don't know if it was a single, but or it was may have been a B-side mm-hmm. for us, but... Um, but we, we do that now and we, we also have the, an extended thing. We come out of You've Got the Gun, which is on the, the DVD as well. But and, and Jeffrey Wells, the guitarist, is now taken to doing maybe nearly a two-minute sort of like a Jimi Hendrix sort of thing mm. uh, and uh, like a free form. And it's just, oh. <laughs> I mean, we love it on stage. I don't know if the audience, they're probably... <laughs> well, as long as you're it. having the fun, that's amazing. I thought, well, that's yeah. it. I mean, we're looking at him going, oh. Yeah. Oh, and, there's, and he puts in something new every night, so it's it's great. Yeah, I mean, from the sherbet days on here, well, how's that? You know, live version on here, and, yeah, and yeah. you've got the gun on here as well. Yeah, is, is how's that one of those songs that you just can't let go of? Well, I, I let go of it for a little while, Paul. But we're going. <laughs> well, you did for many, many years. Uh, in, yeah, in sherbet. Well, that in sherbet when we were sherbs, mm. I think, and then uh, and then when I started out the solo thing, I. I didn't do any Sherbet songs for a long time there, and uh, especially with with House That, the uh, the reason that came in back into the set was I was doing a gig with James Rain, and we were looking for a song for the encore, and uh, he turned to me foolishly because he knows, you know what I'm like. He said, "Why don't we do House That?" <laughs> and I just looked at him and just went, "Huh? <laughs> Have you lost your mind?" Cause it's sort of like me saying to him, "Why don't we do Boys Light Up or Errol or something?" Or, <laughs> yeah. And anyway, we did it that night um, in the encore, and it went really, really well. And I'd forgotten really how how good a song it is, and how popular. You know, like a lot of people seem to like it. So we've we've kept that in all this time, and it's still it goes really well. If not gaining more acceptance now with the with a younger audience as well, who probably don't know it, but the because it's I think. Credit to Garth and, and and Tony for having written it. Mm. That it's a, it's a really good song. They've accepted it. Mm. Now I saw you uh, performing <coughs> uh, a month or two ago at the concert for Zoz, and uh, you did the uh, the horses. Oh yes! And I was amazed that every single person in the audience was singing along to the horses. Yeah, it's spooky. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just it's, have to get up there and let the band play it. You, you could go and sit down and go over to the bar and get a beer while that song was just, on. It's just, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know what's, it, it's been a strange one, you know, since, I don't know, five years, six years ago. Uh, I think it took a turn to become more accepted or maybe it was the attitude that I had or something of singing it or I'm not sure, but um, as James Rain calls it, he said it's so shameless, absolutely shameless that you get the people to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just look at him and go, yeah, okay, okay then, James. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things. It's just grown and it's, um, you know, you get quite a lot of people coming up after and rela- relating their stories of how the, the horses affects them or it, it's been... It come from a tragedy in their life or a happiness or something like that and you go God, you, you forget how it, how songs really are relevant to people and how they touch them but uh, yeah I, I I mean if we can't, wouldn't if we didn't do the song in the set we'd you know it would be uh, we'd be killed I reckon mm. or something like that that was a Ricky Lee Jones song she's been out here in the last couple of years have you met her yeah, or discussed nah, her no nah, tried to contact her once, twice, maybe three or four times mm. uh, to the publishers initially a couple of years ago and, and just outlining that that I recorded her and Walter Becker's song and that it's, it seems to have it went well initially and now it's had a resurgence. And uh, so no reply. And then just recently she was out here and uh, James Rain again had had contact with her and I think they they met to see if they were going to be compatible to write songs and stuff and so I got a contact through James and uh, again wrote up an email to her saying that I just wanted to let her know how uh, how effective their song the horses had been to people here in Australia you know and that it had, it had seemed to have grown 
again from when it came out in 91. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I didn't hear back, which was sad because I thought, you know, it's... Um, I'm sure she might she may read it and think, you know, mm. take it on board and think, oh, that's good, you know. Yeah. But it really, it's... It, I, I haven't... Um, I don't think I've ever done a song that's had such an effect on an audience as, as the horses. You know, how's that and all the sherbet material, all, all great and all that, but this, the horses one is just incredible. Mm. Now, uh, well, and I, I didn't realise it was 20 years old then, if it was 1991. Yeah, 91. 20 years this year? Yeah. <laughs> wow. How time flies when you're having fun. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Forever the Tourist is uh, also part of this. Yeah. Um, and you know, I guess a bit of a uh, bit of footage of you in the Kokoda at mm. one point. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it's. I never thought I would get to use you know the footage um, of Kokoda. Mm. I thought I'll just have it as home stuff. And uh, and then finally, just when this was finished, I, I said to Taylor Welch, who was doing who did all the editing and. So we might try and incorporate, you know, uh, some of the home stuff. And I could see his eyes roll back in his head and go, oh, home footage, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and, but anyway, it, um, it, it ended up being incorporated on the, the DVD, which I look at it and I, I sort of, I like it because it, it brings back, I guess, a lot of memories of, uh, you know, traipsing along that, the Kokoda back in 96. Uh, well, just you know, go through all the home movie collections. You can do DVDs well, that's, for years. It's it's uh, <laughs> well, it, I mean, I nearly I probably buggered the camera because I remember it because the condensation on the on the track was just you know I mean it rained then it was hot and all this so um, there was a big hum in certain parts of it where I'd filmed that uh, we had to try and get out which we did and uh, it, and it and really overall looking at it it paints a a, a different it portrays it a little bit differently from when because channel nine filmed it as well they sent two cameramen mm. with us and uh their their story was well probably better shot better quality but mine was just a different side of it i think with them um, all of the people that were on us you know on that time mm. and that's sort of what basically inspires the t-shirts that you can well, get on the uh, on the Dale braithwaite website as well yeah, that's um, that's really forever. The tourist is really, I guess, the title of the the EP that's still yet to um, be completed. With the the guy I'm riding with, Oliver Jones, we're we're so close, but I, I'm so lazy when it comes to. <laughs> I keep ringing him up and go, "Is it? Have we finished it yet?" And he yeah. said, "Derek, you haven't come over." <laughs> so it's like, you know, but I've, that's the that's the side of it I've got to get get on to and uh but i like i always like the the um the title forever the tourist i thought because you know being in a band like most people that are in bands i mean you're forever just on the road you know mm. it's lovely mm. it's been an interesting year hasn't it uh, we started off with some tragic news with the death of harvey harvey yeah mm. yeah that was uh oh yeah but that and his benefit up there in sydney was just it was so good. Mm. It's um, I mean, it was sad, but it was very much uh, the spirit was there. I think it was from everyone that you know took part in it. It was uh, it was fantastic, and and the sherbet thing. I think playing with them again was um, in some ways it had, it had to me anyway. It had a uh, a better feel than when we did the the countdown spectacular. I think mm -hmm. it was uh, oh probably more more easy get you there was not as much pressure maybe and uh, and surrounded by everyone there and uh, you know ian moss and the likes of that kevin borich and no it was it had the spirit most definitely yeah because you know what a bizarre week i mean losing steve Presswich on the same oh. time i oh, know that was uh, that was uh, really really sad it was just you know and i was talking to i think i was talking to jimmy because i we did we did a gig with him not only in in Perth but there was another one where he was just talking to me about Steve because he'd only spoken to him the night before or something and uh, and it's terrible when that happens I mean it's it's um, you know because I I had likewise I'd spoken to Harvey 
only a week before and I, I could hardly hear him because his throat had gone and uh, and then for some reason um, it, 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 it seemed like he was getting better there and then all of a sudden just took a turn for the worst and then that was it you know it was he was gone mm. and the same probably with Steve just yeah do you uh, do you reg regret not doing more with sherbet in the last decade um, uh, no no I don't it's um I think having done the solo thing for 21 years now or 20 years uh, you, you get probably a little bit set in your ways and and I think as I've told the guy the guys that are in my band we're, we've been together now collectively nearly longer than what Sherbet were mm. so um, and um, the amount of fun and that we have together as a group now, um, I don't know. It's it's, it's really really enjoy. It's as enjoyable as I remember being in Sherbet. You know that group. I guess I guess it's the group mentality thing of you all know each other. You can be in a room together and you can just look at each other and you know what he's thinking. Uh, and the same thing applied in the the Sherbet thing. But but I think I think Sherbet. Um, you know, we ran our course and even, and I, I mean, I'm sure all of us enjoyed immensely the, doing the Sherbs thing, even though we had mm. very little audience. But that, I think, for us was like a, God, this is great, you know, to try this. And it was harder, it was um, edgier than, than Sherbet, but not accepted, you know. <laughs> Well, you went from being a pop band to a rock band. So, yeah. yeah, and didn't play any of the Sherbet songs mm. and yet had part of their name. Yeah, <laughs> but they were two totally sounding oh, different they, bands. Yeah, they? yeah, harder and... Uh, mm. But it, that was... I, I mean, I look at that now and uh, relate it really to... Um, this is Spinal Tap, you know, <laughs> when, they, when they sort of achieved all they wanted and then they wanted to go a new direction. Mm. And they got no one, you know. And I thought, and I thought, I look at that and I go, mm, that's exactly what what happened to us." It's amazing how many artists refer back to Spinal Tap like Isn't it's it? not a comedy; it's actually a documentary for, for a lot of musicians. Well, it is. It's just um, there's so many parts of that that you look at and you go, "Oh." <laughs> Mm, that's really close to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, people who aren't in the music industry are just rolling on the floor laughing at it. But exactly. <laughs> it's just, oh, I mean, it's, um, when you look back on it, it's just, I mean, it's, it really is fantastic being in, like, in music. It's just, um, you know, because you've, they're really, I mean, there probably are rules and regulations and all that, but no one really abides by them or they, they come and go, but... It's such a, um, oh, it, it's not work. Mm. It's it's just really like a hobby that's continued on and you get paid for it and maybe somewhere like you might become successful as well. So it's, yeah, it's all, it's fantastic. Yeah. So if you hadn't done this, what would you have been? Well, I was telling someone the other night in Adelaide at a gig that I would have been a dentist. <laughs> And she looked at me and went, dentist? I said, yeah. I said there was something about teeth, you know, that sort of, I don't know if it was sort of pulling them out or just what it was. And I thought, hmm. But no, probably a dentist or um, even the other day I was thinking about if I, if I hadn't have been um, a singer, that I, I probably would have continued on being a fitter and turner and absolutely hated it and, and would be just about retiring mm. or if not already or... Or left the trade and gone out, some doing something else. But yeah, very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. Well, lucky he didn't become Doctor Daryl Braithwaite. That would have been interesting. Dentist, for us all. or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the uh, the live DVD that's out there now at uh, Daryl's uh, website. You can find out more about that. Daryl, great to have you in here. Thank at you, Oslo. Paul.